Hello, today I'm going to be talking about The Parable of the Sower by Octavia Butler. This came out in 1993, the year of my birth, um, and it is set in the 2020s uh, on the west coast of America. Uh, basically, society has mostly collapsed. Climate change has wrought havoc over North America due to corporate greed. The, um, the gap between the rich and the poor is larger than ever. Um, in fact, most people have very, very little. Police protection and justice has completely broken down. So there is a lot of murder, mostly for food and money. Money still works, so that's nice. Um, but the, uh, there, there aren't any jobs that pay money. There are jobs that can pay, will pay like company credits and then, but then the company credits aren't actually enough to survive on. So you just get deeper in debt to these big corps and like the world is just an absolute shit show. The book follows a girl called Lauren who lives in a sort of walled community of maybe 20 households that um, make all their own food. Some people have jobs where they like cycle out of the community, um, but it is a very kind of insular space and outside of it is anarchy. At a certain point, the community gets broken into and all hell breaks loose. And Lauren, along with a few other people, decide to head north um, because in theory, up north, there are, there's, there's jobs and there's water and, you know, there's some prosperity somewhere. So let's join the great migration of people walking north. I like this book a lot. It had one of my favourite dystopian things, which is when there's like a motley crew of people travelling through a dangerous world in search of a safe place. And it does that really, really well. But let's first tackle the elephant in the room, which is the current climate and the prophecy that <laughs> the barrel of the sower espouses. I feel like at the start of the pandemic, I heard several people, including John Green, who has blurbed here, talk about how this book really does feel like a prophecy for the world we're living in, especially with regards to the climate crisis, increased or maybe just <laughs> realized um, racial discrimination and um, the, the, the wealth divide. And yeah, the world isn't great right now, but I think there's a there's like a large swath of, of Westerners, mostly in America, that are just like, well, this is the end of democracy, blah, blah, blah. When like, judging from what the state of the world is like now to what the state of the world is like in this book, there is a really long way to fall. <laughs> there is so much more that needs to break down for us to end up here. Um, and some of those things, for sure will. Like there are gonna be more wildfires, more hurricanes because we've fucked up the planet. Um, but I don't think that means that, like we should give up because it's complete disaster. And that reminds me of, um, of a, a quote from the very end of this book. He sighed, you know, as bad things are, we haven't hit rock bottom yet. Starvation, disease, drug damage, the mob rule have only begun. Federal, state and local governments still exist, in name at least, and sometimes manage to do something more than collect taxes and send in the military. And the money is still good. That amazes me. However much more you need of it to buy anything these days, it is still accepted. That may be a hopeful sign. Or perhaps it's only more evidence of what I said. We haven't hit bottom yet. And reading that, it reminded me of The Road by Cormac McCarthy. Quite similar, but <laughs> The Road is a lot more morbid, of, um, of like this man and his uh, child traveling across like post-apocalyptic America in search of hope. Um, and that book is so grim and then it takes a turn and it suddenly manages to be more grim. And you're like, how is this possible? How is it getting worse? Because you think like, oh, the world has gone to shit. We're traveling around with our, with our little trolley. Um, that's pretty bad. It can't get any worse than this. This is the worst thing ever. And then suddenly it's like, oh yes, we don't have any weapons now. And then it's suddenly like, oh, we have no food anymore. And then it's suddenly like, oh, we have literally nothing and we're about to die. <laughs> It just always feels like it could get worse, and I, yeah, I don't, I, this is, sorry, this is just me being afraid now, I guess, <laughs> talking about how the world can get a lot worse, but I think on the flip side, it's nice to be appreciative of what we have, and that is especially hard to do when you take it for granted. Like, we all took for granted that you could go outside <laughs> before this year and like meet friends inside and then those rights were taken away from us um appropriately i believe but suddenly we were all like oh yeah human connection that's pretty nice meeting large groups of friends that's something we definitely took for granted 
And um, it's hard, I try and mix lists sometimes of like the things that I have now that I want to appreciate, even though they seem like really normal. Like I have water coming out of my taps, that's cool. Because one day I might not. And I hope against hope that when those kind of things happen, that I don't think the world is terrible now because I don't have this thing. I think oh, it was pretty damn nice that I had that thing for a few decades. On a practical note, this book did scare me and um, I want to become a bit more of a prepper than I currently am. <laughs> like Lauren to her family and her neighbourhood um, try to convince them to be a bit more prepared for the bad things that could happen in their community. Um, just encouraging people to have grab bags um, and that sort of thing. Uh, like keep all of their precious things in, in a, a, a place that is hidden but accessible for them so they can grab them when they need to. Um, and I don't have that here, mostly because it's not like, I'm not in danger of like earthquakes and fire. It doesn't feel very present. Um, that There could be an issue where I need a grab bag, for example. But um, the thing that scares me the most. <laughs> the thing that my biggest fear um, is food scarcity. As people in this modern society, we're so hooked in to like loads of the way the world operates, like our communication is entirely technologically based and if that went down we wouldn't be able to communicate, haha. Ha. But, <laughs> but uh, food is the thing that I feel least in control of that I need the most. And honestly, I just want to buy a plot of land in the middle of the country just so that if things did get really bad where I am. I at least had somewhere to go to. I want to know that I have the knowledge and the means to produce my own food to literally survive. <laughs> and I know that sounds a bit extreme, um, but it's something I feel I'm really, really lacking at the moment. And that was another thing that, that Lauren was really keen on. She was like, we need to preserve this knowledge. We need to gather all of the books of all of this useful information. Even if it's just like identifying trees, that could be really, really helpful in the long run. Um, wow, okay, so this is turning into a disaster prepper video, so let's move on. Another really big theme in this book is religion, um, the parable of the sower uh, from the Bible. So um, Lauren has this sort of belief system that she's kind of developed since she was younger. She writes about it sometimes and um, throughout the book we see her kind of sharing it with more people and getting feedback on it and also kind of you know, talking about it, engaging people's minds on her belief system, which is essentially that God is change, like the concept of change is God, um, and that the kind of ultimate goal for humanity has to be to diversify ourselves through the galaxy, basically, like to survive um, as a species, we need to spread out and spread the good word, etc. I'm quite a natural religion skeptic I would say because I grew up in quite a Christian environment and always felt sort of quite strange from it um so like I'm naturally going to be disinclined to those type of narratives but to be honest I think here it's just I don't I feel like it's really hubristic for a 16 18 whatever age she is girl to um think that she has unlocked the keys to what living a, a good life is the keys to why the universe wants us here and wants to share them with people. We all develop mental models for how we think the world is put together when we're young. Of course we do, we should, that's natural. Um, and for many people that does take the form of organised religion, for other people it takes like personal moral codes. Um, but, but Lauren is like, this is, this is how it is and I need to share it with people and they need to come join my little commune. Um, which I just don't like. I think she's pretty unexceptional and some character in the books comments to her like yeah all right this makes sense but you cannot be a religious figurehead because there's nothing like deifying about you like there's nothing that's putting you above the rest you're not like performing miracles so there's no reason for us to believe like the way that you think the world is put together compared to like any other teenager. This is the first in a two book series. The other one's called The Parable of the Talents. Um, uh, I think that's more sci-fi and I don't intend to read it actually because I feel quite happy with where I landed here. Um, but a lot of this, this book is kind of explained as um, Earthseed is the religion, uh, belief system, I suppose. Um, and this is kind of laid out as sort of the Bible for this religion. This is, this is like the founding text of her going on this journey. 
um, and just don't buy it. I guess that's all there is to say. I don't buy it. I don't think she's a convincing enough character to get people on board with her mindset um, with the kind of like alacrity and speed that one needs to start a religion or a cult, depending on how you think of it. And because of that, I found all of the religious -y bits of the book to be quite tiresome. But I don't know, that might strike your fancy. Um, let me know if you've read it and your feelings about that, actually, I would be really interested in. Um, and yeah, it was it was some, some good sci-fi, um, prompted some interesting slash scary feelings about what the world is like now, but also buoyant feelings because like it could get so much worse. <laughs> it could get so much worse. Let's be prepared for it and appreciate the present. Um, okay, thanks a lot for watching this. Uh, I've been Charlotte Dan, this has been Octavia Butler, and I will see you in a video soon. Bye.